Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to be working on the pond, specifically finishing, digging out around the island, getting this bridge set in place. I've got a lot more to say about it, but we'll keep the intro short and get into the work. So even though this bridge is not that heavy, it is really long at 21 feet. So I needed to figure out a way to carry it from the end so that I would be able to get it in place after the digging is done. I used some heavy duty ratchet straps to pull on the top. And then I used another ratchet strap to secure the bridge to the forks. So that's working good to move the bridge, but I got a little bit of a problem. I want one end of the bridge right here, and then the other end will be here. But to set that into the bridge there means the skid loader is kind of driving off into this hole right here. Obviously, I don't want to dump it into the pond. So I think I'm going to go get some clay and pack it into that spot. There's really no reason for this shoreline to come down, jut in right there, and then back out. So I'm going to pack some clay in there and kind of straighten the line of this out. I rented this mini excavator for a full week and I think I've got enough different jobs lined up to keep it busy. Around here when you rent something for a week that's not unlimited use during that week. They give you eight hours per day and they figure a week is five days. So if I go over 40 hours it'll rack up the bill a lot more. Last time I rented a Mini for a week, I put 56 hours on it, and my $1,000 rental was $1,400. So that's something you definitely want to clarify the overage rate if you ever rent a piece of equipment like this. The most critical thing I have to get done with this machine is getting the bridge set in. But the biggest project that I'm hoping to get done is widening the far bank and dealing with the leak. I've been stockpiling clay for a while now, and I've got access to a lot more of it, actually. And when I was showing my leaky pond dam in a previous video, a lot of people said, why don't you just pack that leaky dam with the clay you have? And that might be what I do. But my concern is that pushing clay off the side of the dam and then trying to pack it in with the Mini X is not going to be as easy as it sounds because I think that clay is just going to continually want to push down into the pond especially if I put the weight of a machine out on it. So when I'm not sure I call in an expert opinion and my friend Joe that helped me dig the pond expansion is coming back out tomorrow to help me look at it and make a decision on that it's essentially the same thing you see me doing here, but on a much larger scale. And if I scrub this footage in high speed, I can really see that material pushing out into the pond. But it worked in this case, and I was able to drive the skid loader out onto this to set the bridge.
I had several different ideas that I debated back and forth about in terms of what was the best way to secure the bridge. You could literally probably just set it out there and it wouldn't go anywhere. But I don't like the idea of that. So I definitely wanted to fasten it in some way. And I've got those huge rocks that you can see on the left side of the screen right now. And I thought about setting the bridge on those. Then I thought about kind of burying those and setting it on them. And what I ended up deciding is that I really wanted them, the bridge to be level and I wanted it to be one to two inches above ground level. And the easiest way to accomplish that is to set it on some concrete blocks. The other advantage to that is I can actually attach the bridge to the concrete blocks by using rebar and filling the holes with concrete. My original plan was to set all the blocks on all four corners before starting to really dig anything. Then I realized that if I set the ones at this end, I'd probably end up driving over them, which could break the blocks or shift them out of level. But by the time I'd thought of that, I'd already dug one hole. So we went ahead and set one of the blocks in, but saved the other set of blocks until after everything else is done. The corner of the bridge will sit in the center of these blocks right here. Then I've measured from the end of the blocks two feet. So we'll have two feet of undisturbed ground here. We're getting ready to fill in around these blocks and tamp that back down. Then we'll actually start cutting out right here. And then we're gonna put long, large diameter rebar into these pockets here. Wrap that around the bridge. I'll have some U-shaped rebar and uh, half inch diameter, probably four foot long pieces bent in half that are go, gonna go down through each of these blocks and should keep us locked in place. Then of course I'll fill the blocks in with concrete. That'll give us a good foundation. So I'm not really an experienced operator on one of these mini excavators, but one thing I can tell you that I learned last time when we were digging on this pond is wet dirt is extremely heavy and the arm on this excavator reaches out quite a ways. So if you fill that bucket with wet dirt and then extend it all the way out, it can literally tip the excavator. And because I had experienced that before and I'm in kind of a precarious spot here, I was pulling the boom up close to the cab before I rotated out above the water. It's not that big of a deal if it tries to tip on you as long as you have some way to catch yourself by putting the boom down. But that wouldn't work when I'm out over the pond.
So if anybody's wondering why this new section of the pond has a big stump in it, it's kind of an interesting story that I covered in previous videos, but I'll tell it again real quick. So when we rented the Mini X last time, and we were prepping the site for the Quonset hut, we had to remove this big pin oak, and that stump weighed more than the Mini Excavator. And it at least eight foot diameter at root ball. And a lot of people told me that this pond needed some structure for the fish. So I decided to take the skid steer and bring it down here. But the skid steer couldn't pick it up either. And it turned into a whole ordeal that included me power washing the dirt off of it. And at the end of the day, it's a pond ornament. About a week after we dug the expansion on the pond, I bought this bridge from a friend of the family and it had a video going to pick it up and it's kind of a fun thing but ever since then I've been dying to see it in place and I'm thrilled with the way it came out even though it's not quite done and I want to get a matching bridge to reach across to the other bank. The goal here was just to get the bridge in and we accomplished that so I feel really good about it. I think it's going to be solid. I'm happy with the way we did everything. Once I get some rebar staked into the ground on all four corners and then concrete that into those blocks, should be pretty solid. I've got this machine for a week. I've got a lot planned this week. So, you know, come back and check out some of the other videos. I'll put links on the screens to a couple more of our videos and I'll see you next time.